Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in today's video I'm going to show you a very basic AI model that you can replicate and create your own and create yourself. So the main point of this video is to, sh is to provide you the idea of how to how can you can create your own model with it with the existing libraries. So in today's video, we're gonna use the we're going to use this file. So I was this Excel file. So I will leave this in the description down below, so you can guys can download. So first, let's import the libraries. So first, the first one we need is pandas. As pd. So pandas, we can use pandas to import our data from Excel files. And next is torch. So it's and it will be the main control the main libraries for us to use to for us to create AI from so let's get the data so data will be equal to panda dot read CSV because Excel file is a CSV format and we use salary dot CSV and now because and so now if we print let's run the code so that right there and now if you run to show the data you'll see something like this and be, we all for this to work we only want it to show us the relationship between the level and salary so currently we don't need the position because it contains text that can mess up with our, our AI so so now we can remove this data by remove the text by convert it into numer numeric values. So data dot apply panda dot to numeric errors equal co course or something. Yeah, something like this. So so if we run this again, oh, this is supposed to be an or. Okay, there we go. You see, it completely removed the position because it contains text in it. And now, so our x, so the input value will be our, so will be our first column. So it's the level column. So to do this, we want to use data dot values. So it's at and we want to take everything in the first column so in the second column so it's one and y equal data values in the second in the third column and we also want it to convert it to tensors so this is just a data type that we use to so that we can use to create AI with so charge.tensor to convert this and we do the same for the Y so our output and also unsqueeze it so you don't need to mine this for now you can do additional research to see what this means but I'm just gonna quickly do it for the sake of this video so now let's run it and now if we check so let's put in x and y you see our x is the first column so corresponding to the level and our second our y is our output so which is our salary so now if we were to plot this on a graph so let's import matplotlib.piplot which is a library for plotting dot plot so our x and our y and let's wait a bit so you should, should see something like this and uh, so our goal here is to create a line that can fit that can represent this so our goal is to create an AI that can create a line that fits best to this data now 
let's separate. So we want to tr create a training set and a test set. So to do this, we can use the sklearn library. So, so sklearn.model selection import train test split. So this train test split function basically divide our tensor into test and training data. So training data is when your AI is trying to learn the trying to learn and the testing data is after it so it can check what it's getting wrong. So to use this we need X train you need to follow the path the exact order here. So X train access Y train and Y test will equal to train test split. So And let's get our X and Y. So this is our two input and output. And finally is the test size. So we will lift it to 0.2. And 0.2 here basically means 20% of the data will be for testing. All right, so now if we were to print the length of our X train, Y train, And X test, Y test. You'll see that it's exactly like so. It will this will be represent twenty percent of the data, and this will the other is the eighty percent. Right. So now let's start creating our model. So to do this, we need a module from Torch named is it just is we need a module from Torch with, which is named NN. So our model will equal to NN dot sequential. So this is some term here, but you don't have to really understand. So basically, now this is our the brain of our AI. So Every item inside here is a layer. So our layer is just, so when we input something into our AI, it'll go through some layers, which will convert the number and for, through some unknown function to create the output. So because our graph is, we would just want to create a basic line, a basic line to represent our graph, We'll use a linear line. So let's write an end of linear. So here you can see that Google Colab recommends recommend us two arguments. So it's in features and out features. So in features is basically the number of, the number of inputs you want to put in. So in this case we only want one the x. So in features will equal to one. And our out features, which is our output will equal to one as well because we want it one X will correspond to one Y and for now because our model is very basic let's just put this at it at, at it is at okay so now if we print out our model you'll see that our model layer zero is a linear line which have one in features and one out features so basically one input and one output so the next step is to create our loss function and optimizer. So a loss function will see how far, so it will calculate how far our model prediction is to the actual data and then improve upon it. So we will use the nn.l1 loss. So why nn.l1, so this is just basically a loss function and to understand why we choose this, you can go through the PyTorch documentation to see what fits best with your current AI situation. So next is our optimizer. So we will be using the SGD optimizer. So for this, you also need, you can also research in the Torch PyTorch documentation. 
So this requires a parameter, 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 so of our model and a learning rate. So learning rate we can set it to about zero point zero one, and then parameter will be our model dot parameters, and that's it. So let's run this. There we go, and then. And finally, the fun part is our training loop. So the number epochs, so it just basically means the amount of a loop we want it to practice for. So for epoch in range epochs. So we will do this about a thousand times. We'll train the model about a thousand times and let's set it to training mode. And then let's predict our training from our training data oops it's supposed to be zero here and then so we'll input our x train and then we will compare it we'll use our loss function to compare it to so this is the model raw output compare it to our y train which is the actual output so y pred and Y train. There we go. And then we'll do some uh, step here. So you don't have to mind this for now. You can research this for do further research. But this is just basically the necessary step for our model to actually improve. So now let's test our model out. So we search first change it to evaluation mode, and then which charge us inference mode so we just turn on uh, basically turn it to testing mode and then predict again so the, this this time on our x test and then wait let me use this typo here and then we will compare it to our y test with this which is the actual value so our test loss will be equal to our loss fn and well this will be y pred so this is our model prediction and the actual so which is y test and finally we just need to print our output so epoch so let's print so this is the number of epoch it's current going through and we want our loss so the lower the loss the better our, our model is so test loss And that's it. So if you want it to be cleaner, you can only print it when the epoch is divisible by 10. So let's reduce the output a bit. And so let's start. So as you can see, this is our, our model train. So if now we were to plot in our graph, so let's use our current existing model. So model zero dot eval mode as let's predict our x data again, our original data. So model zero, no, not really model zero, model dot. So we want to plot in our our model versus the actual data. So plt dot plot. So x with the prediction of our model with our data. And another one to contrast with is the actual data. So is this this is the original data, and this is one that our model predicts. So let's start. So as you can see, it's not even close. So this can be because our layer, the main reason why is our layer, it's maybe not good enough in order to predict our data. So to fix this, because I think the reason why is because the model has mainly the curve. 
So to do this, we will use a nonlinear activation function. And so it's basically, basically will turn our straight line into a curve. Yeah, that's it. And maybe add another layer. And so now let's retest it. So let's just press from start to finish. And you can as you can see our data loss has been reduced like a lot. So the first one is like a hundred thousand, now down to just twelve thousand or even eleven thousand at some point. So now if we were to replot this, you'll see that it's actually got a lot better. So by only changing the, our model from a straight line to a curve actually improves a lot with our actual data, with our data. So that's it for the video.